Hello everybody, I'm Dan. Uh, during this video tutorial, basically I'll be showing you guys how to reinstall the Raspberry Pi 3 operating system, which is called Raspbian, uh, using the same SD card. And I'm running into a situation, well, with what I want to do with my tutorials is I want to restore my Raspberry Pi 3 to its original, basically like out of the box operating system configuration image there. So, because I've got a lot of stuff installed on various directories, and rather than go back and clean it up, I just kind of want to let's restore it to basically factory right out of the right out of the box so um, I'm running uh, Windows 8.1 on my on my desktop here and I'm gonna go ahead and pop open my little custom window here okay so what I've got here is I've got my Raspberry Pi here and of course um, you know just running the Raspberry Pi uh, operating system here I've of course got it, uh, you know, keyboard, mouse, HDMI, and power plugged in. So it's uh, not emulating it or anything this time. And so what I'm going to do first is just shut down Raspberry Pi. So we'll just come up here, go to shut down, and we'll shut it down. Okay, now that we've got the Raspberry Pi shut down, I'm gonna go ahead and unplug the power. and pull out the little the little micro SD card right there right okay um, had to take my stuff my Mac mini over here and then I've got my desktop computer right here with a um, an SD card reader here and I can pop it into the micro SD reader slot here right and um, the trouble is on my computer here is it it'll just uh, it'll never actually recognize it though so um, and that's of course because the Raspbian um, operating system is, is in a Linux uh, format that Windows doesn't read it's not like uh, NTFS or FAT32 or FAT or EF or EX fat there so it's actually just a format it can't read so I ran into a situation where I just couldn't get the the drive formatted and either one of my removable disks will never read this there so there's several utilities out there where you can try to try to read it on a Windows box um, I, I downloaded a couple of them um, and I didn't get anywhere um, the one that's basically from definitely a reputable source is is this SD formatter here. So the SD association is sdcard.org, right? And they have um, they have this downloads folder here and they've created SD card formatters for Windows and for Mac. Okay, so I installed that one first. Well, not actually first, uh, but I installed that one maybe about the third or fourth one I tried and uh, still no luck from it there. It just, it simply cannot find or read the SD card in any way. I even tried, you know, uh, disk part, the disk part utility from um, the low level there, right? And uh, it won't find it either. So as I was getting a little frustrated there and going, wow, man, you know, did, what do I do? How do I get this card back? I even tried it over on my Mac and tried several things there and I couldn't get, the, couldn't get it to go either. Um, uh, then I came up with the idea, let's go ahead and put it into my Android's SD card slot. And so, because of course Android is basically, run, uh, runs a Linux operating system too as well. So, um, let me pop the window back up there. Let me get my camera around here. And I've got my Galaxy... S7 Edge here. And I'm going to pull that SD card out, set it right there. And basically on the S7 Edge, it's a waterproof phone, so I've got to take this, uh, put this up just a little bit there, refocus. I gotta take a pin and I gotta put it in the top slot of the phone here to pop out the 
the little tray that the SD card goes into. Help if I put it in the right direction. Okay, so I got the little tray. I'm going to put it back into. Phone, and let's go ahead and. Doesn't like my fingerprint right at the moment. Okay, um, so from the from the home screen, I'm basically going to go down to apps and then into settings. And uh, inside of settings here, it'll be different, you know, for, for most manufacturers there, but you will find storage in there somewhere, okay? So I'm gonna click on storage there. And um, the SD card here um, says corrupted, okay? So maybe I should just pull this up into the whole window there, okay? So the SD card says corrupted there. So we're just gonna go ahead and click on the SD card it says the data on this card is uh, is corrupt. Uh, to use it, it must be set up. So we're just going to go ahead and click on setting up, and then so we're going to format this as a as a portable storage and select format, and it does go ahead and format the SD card. Okay. So now at this point in time, um, you can see that the SD card is now showing. Um, 96 kilobytes used, which is just basically like some, twist that up just a hair there. Showing 96 kilobytes out of 14.83 gigabytes. This is a 16 gigabyte chip, so there's a little bit of overhead in the file allocation tables, a little bit of wasted space there. All right, so now that we've got our SD card formatted, we no longer have the Raspberry Pi or anything that was on it there. I am going to um, plug it into my USB port for my uh, for my Windows box. Okay, so let's go ahead and bring this down here. I'm gonna go ahead and open up uh, Explorer here. You see, here's my Samsung Galaxy S7 Edge, and you can see here's my SD card right here. Um, so now. Um, what we want to do is, is if you if you were able to actually just simply format your card, you're doing pretty good now. So uh, now let's install uh, the noobs um, image onto the SD card, and it's a pretty pretty simple process. You come over here to uh, RaspberryPi.org, right, and you just simply click on their little downloads here, and you're going to look for the noobs installation, right? It's going to install Raspbian, but you want this right here, okay? And um, you'll have the the download the zip file here, okay? And so if you click when you click on that, it'll of course prompt you to save it here. And you'll notice this thing is huge. It's 1.1 gigabytes. So when you click OK to save it, <coughs> um, it will take a while to download. <coughs> Excuse me. So I am just going to go ahead and cancel that because I have already downloaded it. I don't want to have you guys sit there and wait for you know one over one gig to download, even though I've got a pretty high speed. I've got 300 uh, megabit service here, but um, so basically after that downloads, it's going to you're going to get a, a file here, no noobs version two one underscore zip right, and that zip file I've just extracted into this uh, RPI folder here right on my desktop. So inside of the extracted folder, you've got all these files right here, right? Um, with Windows, you want to make sure the view and you've got hidden file names check there and file name extensions doesn't really matter. I just like to see extensions myself there. So we're going to come back over here and I'll just minimize that. And all we have to do is we just have to simply get all of these files over onto that SD card, right? So I'm just going to highlight all these, um, right click, select, copy, come over here to the card, and I'm gonna paste those in. Um, yes. And I'm gonna do one folder at a time. When I tried to do this the first time there and I did all the folders, it just it didn't work very well. Uh, the next one I'm gonna do is defaults. I'm gonna copy defaults over there. Let's paste it. 
And let's come over here to overlays. And uh, the largest, the largest copy is basically going to be the OS folder, and it's it's a big one here. So um, this one's almost done. All right, so the OS folder here. If we come down to properties, you can see it's just a little over a gigabyte there. So we're gonna all right click on that, copy, and it'll be the last one to paste in. And sometimes it'll come up with, do you want to copy release in those text? Just select yes whenever that pops up there. And this will copy over fairly quickly there. So it's not like we have to pause or anything like that. Um, so basically what I'm going to be doing after this here is I'm going to pop that SD card out of my Samsung Galaxy S7. Put it back into the SD slot on the Raspberry Pi 3. And then we're going to... I'll reattach the power cord. <clears throat> now the installation itself, of course, will, if you remember back to the original installation, it did take uh, probably about 10, maybe 15 minutes tops once we do get to that boot screen. But uh, um, after you get to the boot screen on, on the device there, I always recommend that people, and it's one thing that I won't show at the end of the video here, you know, I always recommend that, that people run a couple of commands there. Uh, pad, uh, let's see, I'm just close out of that. So when, uh, when you open up the terminal server um, during our install there, first thing you want to do is uh, sudo um, apt get and just do an update. That'll go out and just uh, update all of the all of the stuff there. Basically APT, well sudo, sudo is short for super user do. And when you run a program with uh, sudo, yeah, well, that would help there. When you run a program and you prefix it with sudo, that basically means super user do. It's the equivalent of like in Windows right clicking something and selecting, you know, run as administrator. It runs it with basically the root account and uh, you have all the privileges, elevated privileges there. Uh, APT is short for Advanced Package Tool Get, and uh, Update just updates all of the packages that are installed with the package tool there, so for many repositories that are out there. After you run that command and it's done, uh, then you're going to want to run sudo apt get and then upgrade, and basically an upgrade will go ahead and um, check all of the, all the software that's installed there. It'll go out to the uh, the Raspbian repository and uh, check for any uh, upgrades that might be available and install them there. In addition to that, it'll also update it to the latest uh, firmware at the same time with the upgrade command. Um, so we've got all of our files written over here into the Samsung Galaxy S7 into the SD card there. So um, I'm just going to go ahead and close out of that window, close out of this window. Uh, SD form formatter, you can see never even found anything. Took a while and hung there too as well. I'm gonna bring back up my my window there. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and you know I should go in and unmount this thing, but I don't I don't really care. It's it's gonna be just fine. Go ahead and pop that door open there. I have to do it with a pin at the top there. I'm gonna pull out my SD card there. Put that back in, set my phone aside. All right, so now I'm going to put the SD card back into the Raspberry Pi. Grab my power cord. Plug it back in. All right, let's go ahead and tilt the refocus. Okay, so here's what it comes up to on the screen on there, and I'll go ahead and just move this in closer there. Right, so it gives us the, op uh, the option to select uh, Raspbian. 
right? And we go ahead and just check that, right? And click this, click install. And warning, this uh, will install selected operating system. All existing data on the SD card will be overwritten, including the OSs that are already installed, right? And we already we already knew that it was it was gone at that point anyway. There, so um, maybe I'll see if I can get that in just a little bit more. There we go. Okay, yes on that. So now this will go through and uh, install Raspberry Pi and all the uh, all the good stuff there that uh, that came with it directly from the factory settings, including for me, you know, the original Java SE8 setup and so on and so forth there. So I'm going to go ahead and um, pause my video and um, I'll be back with you guys in half a second once this is done there. Okay, we're almost done with the installation now. There we go, 100%. In a moment here, we'll get a little message box saying that the operating system was installed successfully. Then while we were out, I readjusted the camera there. You can, of course, still see like the screen blur and whatnot there. But in my next video, I'll be showing you guys how to install remote desktop in there too so we can get some good emulation and some good high quality HD video stuff there. Okay, so the OS installed successfully. All right, and now the uh, now it's going to reboot. And there we are, just like it came right out of the box. Um, all of our stuff that we had on previously is all, of course, wiped out. The Pi user, just the normal stuff here. All the other stuff I had installed is gone, so just what I wanted to do there. Um, so just one, two more things there, sudo apt get. Update right now we'll, that'll just run through and get those updates and then run a uh, sudo apt get and then upgrade after that and you'll be good to go. Um, other than that, that that'll pretty much do it there. So I'm gonna go ahead and just minimize that. And um, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments section below. Thanks for watching.